if you have a sacral inner authority because it's defined this top statement becomes amongst the truest things in your natural existence truth comes from the sacral center comes as a response um reading questions absolutely i love this thing so the, so the sacral center is always there buzzing with its energy it's not ready to fall asleep until it runs out of energy that's why sacral beings have a hard time falling asleep um if they're not ready and when they're trying to get to this truth what do they want to do this leading question is good and this question can be can be teased out into hundreds of various questions as long as they're formatted in a yes no type format you know some kind of affirmative or negatory whatever um do we have I slides want this? for that too <laughs> oh, geez. Yep. so just do i want this it's a nice just general statement do i want do i like is it uh-huh you know that and then this decision time frame this is the gorgeous this is gorgeous because it, it's part of what is the reason we sacral people lose track of it because it's too fast it's immediate and that's how you come to know it you know it in its immediacy you know everything else is not that and I'm sure that's on a slide too. So, <laughs> yeah. so now we get into some more nitty gritty things. So, Danny, you can take it away. Um, more on the sacral authority. I'll just start at the top. Yeah, um, exactly. Gut instinct. This guides desire, and it's this gut response. It feels like an energetic push, like an electric motor just came on to move you. So it's a movement push gut feeling and it is you can call it gut all day long and it and like you mentioned absolutes it opt like the spleen it operates in absolutes it um it does require specific options for decision making and this clarity process um however those options don't need to be labeled and they don't need to be limited so it can include infinity it's just that the sacral will know which to pluck out of infinity you know worth of choices so um because it sounds like it could narrow it's like oh only in these specific options could the sacral work no sacral will work at all times um is the thing and but it does fall within its specific decision making clarity process um precise questions to elicit these gut responses this is a big deal it's i keep trying to teach generators how to talk to each other and for some reason it's hard um i don't I wish we get a couple well, generators on here. Yes. Yeah. So one of the one of the good examples I like to think about, uh, and I use my child and my husband as an example, uh, both you know, pure and manifesting generator. Food. I tell them the option. I don't look at them and give them an open ended question like, "What do you feel like eating?" Instead, I'm like, "Do you want pizza? Do you want sushi?" And they'll lean towards the thing that they're wanting, like right. almost immediately. That's what that precise question thing is like has that been happening for you moana that's for real that's happens in your home now yeah yeah wow. I, i've changed the way i communicate with them absolutely can we talk about that for one quick second of i know we're in the slides but this is just so <laughs> gorgeous because all i ever really care about is watching it show up in real life i love mm -hmm. this show i love teaching all this stuff but please show me the real life stuff because that's what mm -hmm. we're after so mm -hmm. what you're telling me is that in your home that which is a problem for many many homes meal time has turned into a, an, a, your ability to communicate with the truth of the beings and suddenly have and as soon as you didn't care that you're not in charge of what they eat because you're supposed to be the parent or or any of these things mm -hmm. as soon as you stop caring suddenly you you had peace yeah and I mean, it, there's still like I'm getting to choose the options I'm presenting. Oh, right, right, of course. It, it, instead of like kind of hot dog versus pizza. Right. <laughs> I mean, I I just I did say pizza and sushi. I should have changed yeah. that to like maybe shawarma wrap and sushi. But well, you choose <laughs> the options. Yeah, you choose the options. Yeah. No, absolutely. I'm sure, and they'll tell you if it's none of them. It means they're not hungry. Oh, before. believe me, that happens a lot. Yeah. Like my my uh, my son will be like, uh, can I have a different thing? And he wants me to present a a different option from the options. Good I generator, present. you've trained him to do that. He does it, yeah. He does it naturally. See, there's his truth coming out. So what what Moana is pointing out is she's witnessing the nature of her generator child is absolute. It's absolute. It just is. It shows up every day, all, all day long. That's beautiful. I love that. Mm -hmm. 
Moana, seven yeah. years from now, or se as he turns seven, this mm -hmm. is so ingrained in him. By the time he's 14, he won't accept people telling him what to do. He'll be like, well, where's my options? Uh, I, you know what? I'm inventing my own options. One of them is I don't like it. You know, <laughs> now, uh -uh, he'll allow uh -uh, to come out. Oh, yeah. There you go. You went into the right. The next bullet point. Oh. Sacral Center immediately responds with uh -huh. I've been trying to figure out how to spell these. Uh-huh. A-H-H-U-H. Or uh -uh. Use. yes, A's and U's. Okay. Um, yeah, no commitment. And and there's technically one in the middle, which is I don't know, but that's yeah. just because individual circuitry demands we honor a mood that we can't tell what it is until we're asked. So mm -hmm. if it's sometimes it's just I don't know, you can't tell, which really means uh-uh. You're not ready yet, whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but it isn't necessarily quite final. Um, mm -hmm. So this this thing comes out immediately. It comes out immediately with no. It moves at the speed of electricity, chemical. And electricity. it's in the now. It's in the now. You, you right. can't you can't be like in the future. I'll give you an option, and you'll tell me what the thing is. It's like what? What do you mean in the future? <laughs> right. It's not only in the now, but it's so quickly in the now that that responsive energetic thrust of yes or no, uh-huh, uh-uh, just affirmative, negative, um, it's immediate. It's immediate. And I, I like to point out we're electrical beings, right? Current going through our body, all that good stuff. Well, how fast does electricity move through the body at about the speed a battery turns on a flashlight, right? Oh, wow. Chemical chemical electricity chemistry creating an electrical charge that's fast it's immediate to us and that's how fast the sacral goes so how fast your flashlight gets turned on or the lights on your car because they're battery operated is the speed at which uh is the speed at which sacral works very cool so yep. uh i mean you, you could i can go over this one so uh when you get an affirmative or a yes response then your sacral turns on to give you that energy to do the thing or right. to give to a person, whatever. Right, right. To do, to be the thing, whatever, to sit still, to keep thinking, whatever it is, you now have the energy and you're happy. You, So the, the symptom of it, the thing that helps you recognize that you've just honored your sacral is you're happy about it. Do, 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 do. And it's, <laughs> it's self-absorbed happy, you, it's not one else's yet. And then, mm -hmm. um, and that's the thing and then the thing that makes it show up is, well what it is you're happy about is you're doing something uh, mm -hmm. so you see witness oh my god i'm doing this i i said i wanted to do that i had this energy to do it i'm doing it i'm happy about it that was the right decision that was the right thing so, so i mean the trick to that is you have to start trusting that your quick as reflex spontaneous decisions is correct Yep. And, you know, not Absolutely. not tell right. yourself otherwise. Right. So and here's the other thing. So this is this is something, uh, Danny, you can agree or disagree. Your answers might change. So if I again, let's go back to the food example, because it, it works like it, today I gave the option of shawarma versus sushi. You might choose sushi tomorrow. It might be shawarma. Mm -hmm. it, 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 it has to be so <laughs> good good thing to think about is if you ask a sacral a thing about a future thing that answer might change by the time you got up to the future thing totally and in fact it very likely will it very likely will change. like like a party like right? in the moment they'll be like yeah i'll go to the party you know the night before you still want to go to the party yeah i don't know anymore. Eh. <laughs> well maybe check with me tomorrow and on the night of the party it's yes or no yep so it's, that is yeah. so it, it works in absolutes but it's also changeable um up until the point of the thing that's why it's it's very much like an immediate thing all right yeah. so this is the beautiful six step decision making guide to oh, sacral man. authority one you tune into your gut feeling when a decision is put in front of you so danny you have anything to add to that? yes adding to that Tune into your gut sacral feeling right below your navel at all times during every moment of every day, whether you're aware of a decision to be made or not, because you'll be making moment to moment decisions almost with every step. Oh, okay. There you go. Yeah. The nice nuance. Yep. Okay. Step two 
So your initial body's reaction is your truth. Okay. So you'll either feel like almost like a going towards the thing, right? Like excitement or desire, um, yeah. or it could, you know, be retracting away, which is most likely I don't right. want to do that. <laughs> right. Your body will show you, by the way, the sacral is the very basis of the thing that they tuned into long before we knew about human design, where they were doing muscle motor testing to get to the truth. You know, you hold your arm out. If it gets weak, that's not true. If it, you know, sacral is tuned into this gravitational center and this magnetic center of this planet. Sacral appears to be tuned into the vibration of the universe. I, I don't. I don't have a measurement for what to what degree, but I believe in ourselves as these incredible things. And I'm pretty sure we're we're almost godlike, you know, mm -hmm. in, in our innocence, in our innocence. Mm -hmm. Get out of that innocence. You lose it, of course. But of course. Yeah. Uh, so our step three is when or if you have the clear answer, uh, don't waver. Be like, yeah, this Shazam. is my decision. Yep. I'm going with it. Like, do not backpedal and start pondering and questioning the and if you're in your experiment if you're in your experiment we read for you you've been read you're watching it happen so now you're in that experiment consider the first year or two you're just always in this experiment um and you're watching it at all you are to when you do go against it and question it and start thinking you're supposed to watch that as well when you get into the experiment at that point when you still question it or doubt it and do all the things that the not self mind makes us do at that point that's just as okay as long as you're watching because you need to see the difference not self mind everything that makes you think and ponder comes in a split second later a skip of a record later it's only the length of time it takes for a record to have a skip you know it takes a tenth a third of a second a second would be a long time you know um but it's not immediate and if you've ever listened to a record player and there's a skip on your record, you hear it even though the skip only lasted, you know, 0.018 seconds in time. You know, but you still heard the skip loud and clear. It happened right in the middle of your favorite thing or whatever. Right. So you're the whole thing about that now is and that no four. and that yes of three and four is to recognize the immediacy of it. And then that skip of a record later, you start thinking mm -hmm. that's simple. Right. So like he said, we're going into four. <clears throat> if somehow you don't get an answer, it's not a yes, it's not a no. Just consider that a no for right now. Like we said, in the moment, you don't have an answer. But later when you check in, you will. It sounds like this. Uh, <laughs> you, know, me, you know, I don't I don't know. Um, can I hit you back? All of that, all of that sounds like everything I just did there. There you go. Uh, and then uh, our step five is if you're, you know, you're getting like a icky feeling in your gut, um, it could also be fear, right? It could also be being scared. So when you're feeling that, you know, let your body feel it. Don't pressure yourself to, again, make a decision and ask yourself another hour from now another two hours or another day from now and yeah, allow, once the fear your, has passed yeah, allow yourself the input and see how it is um to intentionally ask yourself invites the not self mind to interfere it, it, asking yourself is hard to do even even after you've been at it for a long time although you can sort of start asking yourself you'll see um but enter back into where the energy is that you were responding to in the first place, whether it's a phone call or, or a thought, or you go back to a instruction you had to read that you didn't feel like doing and you go back to it, read it again. Uh, if, uh, maybe not. You know what I mean? You're, you're putting something together and you stopped. It's like, I don't want to do it. You know, you're, you're pissed. You need to go get something. You don't feel like it. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Watch. These are the moments right. to watch that immediacy. Yes. Yeah, so wait Perfect. and fear. Absolutely. Someone says something and suddenly you're afraid of a consequence. That's your mind. It's your mind in uh, telling you a consequence uh, uh, of a thing. But the gut told you the truth right away. But the fear can be so loud that you lose track of what gut said. You just couldn't tell. It's just, it, it just it, it drowned it out. It's just too much, too much noise on the line. Couldn't hear. Couldn't make it out. 
trying to yeah. hear what you mean saying in a roaring crowd and they're 10 feet away you just you, you see them trying to talk but no you can't tell mm -hmm. and then leads us to number six you just ask yourself do i want this like we showed before and it will always be your compass of things that are meant for you if you if you're sacral and you just follow this handy dandy step six step yeah, process yeah. absolutely and and make it nuanced follow it deeply as it relates to like pulling it apart and adding words and adding nuance to all of this for yourself because as soon as i read this number six you know do i want this or not you basically go right back to number one and what we were saying at the beginning um have i noticed this beautiful outcome that is i'm happy i like mm -hmm. it I, or i'm absorbed or I, I can't seem to resist it or i'm doing it and then the second thing is you notice that you are doing it whatever the thing is you're physically doing the thing with your hands with your mind at a keyboard in motion driving whatever the thing is you know mm -hmm. racing for impact whatever it is that you're doing um you're doing it and you're like oh you're okay with it you're cleaning up you started doing the dishes you didn't feel like doing the dishes but you just you started now you're doing them this is sacral sacral is saying i don't mind doing the things sacral likes to work it's got to be happy and you have to witness that your energy is at near 100 percent for the thing you're doing mm -hmm. so 100 one of the things danny mentioned right is the fear and going into the mind and the not self so a lot of that comes from conditioning right? Things that are not truly you. So uh, being a sacral authority, there are some examples that I've listed out for you for what are the primary conditioning that you would have to witness and hopefully start deconditioning out of you. So Danny, would you like to take a look at these? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> this conditioning. So the sacral authority is conditioned heavily because what do our parents do when we're little? It starts at the home. They stop asking us questions by the time once we start talking they slow down on their question asking so we then don't have as much ability to respond and we're now trying to initiate to get our parents to engage or whatever the, the situation is whatever the dynamic is mm -hmm. mom can i can i go look at this will you look at that hey did i did this thing and, and the parents stop they just don't ask as much they don't know mm -hmm. so only that's, needs, a, that's the starting point mm -hmm. yeah, it only needs to be a little bit mom and dad only need to take 10 percent of the questions they would ask and start turning them into statements they make if they're not aware that even that 10 percent is a reduction and the kid's like what's going on my life force is going away not coming harder you know um they'll notice so thinking you have to take a long time to decide on things if you're an emotional authority that may totally be true um if you're a sacral inner authority you really don't however mm -hmm. um the sacral will always work in a matter of degree. Hey, yeah, let's take the next step. Well, if we do the whole thing that was is listed here, you know, that's a big deal, and we're going to be into a big thing. It's like, well, I'll, I'll, I'll drive the first mile. I'll see if I want to drive the second mile. So there's sacral, yes, to move. And then the sacral has always got a reservation. I reserve the right to change my mind. Yeah. You just said yes. Uh, uh. Not no more. You know. Right. But this this particular bullet point is saying, like, when you spontaneously make a decision, people almost say, don't you need more time? How can you make that decision so fast? Oh, right. right. And then you start second guessing. That's yes. this this first bullet point. It's like the conditioning of thinking that your initial gut response is wrong or it shouldn't right. be trusted because it takes time. Counting. Yeah. Right. And it leads to you not believing in your your sacred responses anymore right it's like is that the right decision was that a good idea and then you go into scenario Confusing. spinning yeah. not self mind yeah. chatter yeah. right that's and how you know you're out of your responsive nature as soon as you're confused as soon as there's stuff going on as soon as indecision is truly just all over the place run with it there's nothing you can do you're stuck in it for a moment or for an hour day whatever but mm -hmm. just recognize sacral has been usurped sacral has been noised out canceled out and uh, you got to get back in touch with it um mm -hmm. lack of confidence in that sacral is what you're is what we're referring to right and we kind of touched upon the fear thing right yep. fear and anxiety go hand in hand and like what is yep. that what is that really right it's it's you scenario spinning about the future it's like, well, if I do this, then this might happen and that might happen. And like, what if I don't, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. And then that anxiety starts up. Um, that's something that's very, very common. 
as well is, you know, I was like, if, the, if I made a decision so quickly, you know, what if it's the wrong one and the things don't turn out the way uh, that works for everybody? If you're a generator with a sacral inner authority, um, get used to play with it. I, I don't want to scare people away, but I mean, I have moments I've had in my experiment, I had moments of fear, abject fear. It's like, what am I doing? What am I doing? I, could, I couldn't stop doing the thing I was doing. And I'm like, I clearly can't stop doing the thing I'm doing. I don't want to stop doing the thing I'm doing. And then, but the fear would come in sometimes. What the hell, you know, this isn't making me money or whatever, right? All the things, just thought I'd throw that out there. Mm -hmm. No, I mean, the whole point is to have like real life experiences, right? This is why we bring on guests when it's, uh, you know, appropriate for the episode, because it, then you can see like a living, breathing example, which is why Danny is so perfect for our sacral authority section of today, because he's lived it his whole life. So, yeah, I can so ask me questions, yes or no questions, you'll watch me go, and we'll watch where I struggle, because everyone's, if you're conditioned, you struggle sooner or later. Yeah. Right, and and this is interesting, you kind of talked, on, uh, you know, touched on this, is you're expected to be reliable and say and do the same thing day in, day out, day in, day out. And if you don't do that, you are, you know, Might get considered trouble. flaky. You're yep. un unreliable, right? And you're going again, because again, Danny said, you should have 100% permission to change your mind. It was a yes now, it might not be a yes later, but again, you fearing oh my god they want me to say a certain response over and over again you start shutting your sacral down jobs do that a job is a great place to notice that some people take the average job and some people they'll, they'll generators they'll find ways to get into their job for part of the day just to make it go just to make it move so they're being themselves in that moment even though the job may be their dream job or whatever but and then other times they're not that's a great place to just notice you know what i mean I remember all the times I did not want to go to school. I didn't know how true that was. Even I second guessed myself and thought I was just thinking, I was just thinking I was trying to avoid it to get away with something. Even I thought it wasn't as profoundly true as I now look back and know that it was. Maybe I was supposed to be, um, I have a feeling I was supposed to be part homeschooled, part school schooled. When Danny was small, his dream was to be maybe homeschooled and thinking that's not realistic, that all kids go to regular school or you have to be practical. I have to work this job because that's what everybody does. I wanted to be a movie star, by the way. Oh, there you go. It's like, no, that's not realistic. That's not what, what people do. Um, and yeah, that's conditioning, too. Yep. And I remember, yeah, it's a various things. Long. As I got older, every cockamamie thing I thought of that I wanted to do, I was told over and over again, that might not be realistic or da da da, da. Every once in a while, I would I would hear advice. It doesn't mean generators are incapable of, of accepting advice. Um, the thing is, if you have the energy to listen to the advice, that's where you're supposed to be. So your uncle comes along and is like, hey, you know, kid, can I, can I give you, let me give you my take on this. And you look at him like, sure, sure, Uncle Bobby, go, you know, yeah, what do you got? And but inside, you know, I have the I reserve the right to say uh uh to whatever you're saying. Mm -hmm. But maybe Uncle Bob says something. It's like, you know, I'm going to have to ponder that. And then mm -hmm. fine. And then right. someone asks you questions later or the situation comes up later. Now you're thinking about it differently. But sacral will still give you that truth in the moment. Mm -hmm. Yep. So we have some tips for you for the previous slides conditioning. So when you start noticing that you're going into overthinking mode, right? Just do like a quick little visualization where you see a white light in the center of your mind and going down to your gut. And it just bring it's a small little exercise to bring you into the present. Because usually whenever you're overthinking, you have gone into either future mode or past mode. And neither of those are the present mode, which is what you need to be in to get to your sacral. That's right. That's right. right. This is good. I love this one, by the way. Welcome. There's so much more. Um, uh, and then, yeah, there may be times where, you, again, you're second guessing yourself, right? And 
when that happens. It can also be that you have, um, you know, decision making fatigue. There are just too many options, right? And it's just easier to simplify, right? To get away from that overwhelm. Yeah, to integrate how you're operating. Um, exactly. Um, our before decision making conversations. I like this. I like this line. Uh, grounding yourself by checking in with your five senses. This is, you know what? I don't do, I don't, I should learn a few cool physical tricks for people. I have a couple, but these are a couple cool ones to add. Yeah. And this, the, the five senses is super easy, right? You could do it anywhere, right? And it's like, what do I see? What do I smell? What do I hear? What do I feel on my body? Did I get all this the senses? Music. <laughs> what am I tasting? <laughs> That's the one I always forget. I'm like, what am I tasting? Oh, do I have a piece of gum in my mouth? Does it, you know, still taste like dinner? Like, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> like it is grounding. That's very grounding. You're right. Yeah. All these things bring you into now. Mm -hmm. They all bring you into now. Right. And then um, this is, I guess, more of a tip for someone who is dealing with the sacral authority. Don't ask them if you're sure. Because then they go from their sacral into their mind. And then yep. they start second guessing. Wait, what do you... Uh, and no, we, we want to build I'm up confidence. Good. Yeah. And when I, when I do analysis and I'm reading for people and it usually, you know, I usually re end up having to do it twice, you know, reading for folks two times over the course of a couple days, I'd noticed that, um, I do ask the generators if you're sure, but I only do it when I'm very tuned into that wasn't the sacral response. It's the only time I ask, are you sure? Mm -hmm. Are you sure about that last, that the last answer? And then when I hear another short delay, skip of a record, and then they start trying to say something, you know, that's why I tune them right in. I'm like, notice how you're struggling. Notice how it doesn't feel great. Notice how your energy's, and they see it. And that's where the beauty starts to happen. Yep. So here's some good habits for someone with a sacral authority, right? So Danny was like, yeah, grounding. So anything grounding, again, that brings you back to the present, right? It could be yoga. It could be, you know, breathing. It could be you know, the five senses thing. It could be yoga, inten intentional breathing. Absolutely. Um, uh, that's a good one, actually, because it brings you right into the now. Listen to your breath when you do that. If you can put your hand on your heart and, and almost l listen to it beat, that's an mm -hmm. incredible sensation of right now. That is as now as you get. Um, yeah. Yeah. There's um, um, like my, my family's Buddhist, right? So there's one where you, you do Ev mindful basically everything right so usually most of the time when we're doing any sort of activity driving eating whatever we're kind of in a trance in an autopilot right so this way what you're doing is you're you're being very very intentional with feeling out all your sensations so when you're chewing for example you're you're really feeling each bite you're really, you know, exploring the taste. It, it gets you completely out of your mind. And again, you don't have to do it with just eating. You could do it with doing the dishes. It's like, okay, you know, each, uh, what does the water sound like? What does the scrubbing feel like on my hands? So it's just, I mean, this is good practice for anyone, but <laughs> just it something is. to keep in mind. Yeah, we can, yeah, we'll, we'll just replace certain words, but these same things are, are for all the types, all the people at any given time. This is good stuff. Um, mm -hmm embrace your mantra oh it's so a express your primal reactions to food see we keep coming back to food this is a way if you've been disconnected from your sacral which can be very true for you for an adult listening to this and you know you're just very new to human design uh to get back into it is let yourself make those sounds mm, right so when my my right. kiddo's eating i always let him make whatever guttural sounds are coming out of him to express the thing when he's eating like oh yeah that's yummy mm, like that's you i guess what's the word it's opening that up again it's aligning it's aligning him to himself deeply and that and then it brings him into the now as soon as you're making a sound, you're in the now. If you're making a sound, you're focused on the sound you're making. You're now, you know. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, for all sacral authorities out there, uh, embrace the saying, it's a hell yes or a hell no for me. It's a hell yes or a hell no. <laughs> if it's not any of them two things, then I don't know. <laughs> oh, if the, I should write that down. Also, repeat to yourself, I trust myself. And do that three times a day.
And that's building self-trust within you. If you've been, again, disconnected and not trusting how you've been getting your sounds. And then maybe you, you've been listening to your sacral, but then not actually acting upon what your sacral wanted to do. Right? Can I go so, back to that I trust myself thing? Sure. Um, it's important because this one here is a particularly really cool thing because it's a it's a it's an isolated statement out of the blue you might not believe it and that's why i'm bringing mm -hmm. this if you don't actually believe that and you're and and you know you're not certain if you believe it and you feel weird saying it because you're not sure if it's true and all those things if any of this stuff is happening understand that's not you that's not you because the real you the five-year-old you trusts yourself um period and the four-year-old trusted itself um so just Fake it till you make it. Say it out loud, even though it hurts a little and it doesn't quite feel right to your psyche yet. That's even more reason to physically plant yourself and say the dang thing. Say it. Mm -hmm. Say it out loud. Mm -hmm. yep. And yeah, sacrals uh, love doing, right? So do things that stimulate whatever it is. It could be painting for you. It could be Lego. It could be make cooking a really complex meal. Whatever it is for you, it, you know, it stimulates the satisfaction in your sacral. When it could you, be waiting till the last minute to get the trash out. If that's your thing, do it, you know, just be doing it. Um, right. LOL. Okay, so. Just sacral out. has this beautiful thing. If you're a generator, you're walking around a sacral generator, manifesting or otherwise, you are walking around with this beautiful sense of answering the question, who am I? That's built into your genome. Who am I? and it's it's to let the sacral know you're deeply self-concerned as you're supposed to be so that all the definition can leave your aura and go out and empower the other as yourself that's the self-concern is not selfish it's to be yourself so well that you can pour yourself out into the world and, and empower the rest of the world as yourself not as a fraud not as something else not as fooling yourself or any of that and so who am I? Put this question front and center. Add that to the rest of the questions that were on here. You know, mm -hmm. who am I? And, and understand that you're looking for that skip of a record later to say, have I started thinking? Mm. So if I'm explaining to, uh, to a four-year-old or five-year-old, I can only use terms like, oh, no, it's either right now or it's a skip of a record later. Let's say they know what a record is. You know what I mean? And that's that's all I can tell them. I can't go into any detailed descriptions, too many words. It's just you're just looking for that, you know, bump later. You're driving down the road, there's a little bump. But um, you know, how many how many seconds was that? That wasn't that was one tenth of one second. But you heard it, you felt it. You need to get that little bump in the road, that skip of a record later to stand out. Mm -hmm. Once you see it, it stands out, and then you start realizing I have proofs before that, I have lies after that. Oh, that's a good one.